Welcome everyone to this presentation entitled Discovery of Manufactured ESCS Aggregates. Let me turn my webcam on so you can see me. Hello. My name is Darren Medeiros and I'm the Technical Sales and Marketing Representative for Ute Light Corporation. This specific presentation is an introduction into the world of manufactured expanded shale, clay, and slate structural lightweight aggregates. Conforming to the specification ASTM C330-17, which is the specification for structural lightweight aggregates in concrete. So I'm going to turn my camera back off here. And uh, I do, again, appreciate your time and attention. This presentation will take approximately 35 minutes. So uh, please try to uh, stay with me for that uh, entire length of this presentation. Okay, if you have any questions regarding this presentation or if you would like to um, schedule a live webinar, uh, feel free to contact me. My contact information will be available at the end of this presentation. Also, please follow Ute Light on all of our social media platforms listed here for in-depth and unique information regarding the use of this type of material in a wide variety of applications. Uh, now let us begin this discovery journey together into the world of manufactured lightweight aggregates, expanded shell, clays, and slates. Uh, just a little background about myself. I grew up on a small little island out in the middle of the Pacific called Oahu, which is in the Hawaiian Islands, where I enjoyed a Hawaiian lifestyle and did many of my extracurricular activities around the ocean. Uh, regarding my work background, uh, I worked in the construction industry uh, the majority of my working career, first as a draftsman for an architectural firm in Honolulu, then a short time later as a laborer in the labor's union in Honolulu, and then back uh, in 1990, we relocated here to Salt Lake City, where I am today. I've been working in and around the ready mix industry uh, since that time. Uh, here in Salt Lake City, I worked for a major ready mix producer for a number of years before uh, my current position here with Ute Light Corporation 21 years ago. Uh, Ute Light is one of two manufacturers of expanded shale lightweight aggregates in the Western United States. And I assist again with uh, technical sales and marketing in uh, the majority of the states out west here. Uh, Ute Light's uh, been providing high quality expanded shell in service since 1962. That's uh, 58 years ago. I consider myself along with my colleagues experts in the field of expanded shell lightweight aggregates in a wide variety of applications. Uh, this is our regional territory that uh, Ute Light covers, all of the western uh, states, uh, along with uh, the western parts of Canada and the state of Hawaii. Uh, Ute Light is actively involved with all of our structural engineering associations out west. Uh, we're also involved with the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, in its yearly regional concrete canoe competitions on a college and university level. Um, and then I do offer presentations. So if uh, any of you are uh, students uh, with ASCE in various uh, chapters and universities out West, if you're interested in uh, a presentation, just let me know. You know, currently um, due to COVID um, uh, webinars, the webinar format, uh, is preferred. So um, feel free to get a hold of me. I'd love to do a live webinar um, until uh, in person presentations are again allowed. So um, if you're interested in a live presentation, just let me know. Again, my contact information uh, will be provided at the end of this presentation. Uh, Ute Light is also very active in our uh, American Concrete Institute chapters um, here in Salt Lake City and around the West. Um, so we do um, are very um, active in uh, engineering and in our uh, concrete associations. So uh, today's presentation, again, will be uh, discovering 
manufactured ESCS aggregates. Uh, the learning objectives are in three parts. First part is I'll take you um, into the lightweight aggregates environment. We'll be looking at the natural and then the manufactured uh, lightweight materials. I'll also talk about the differences and then I'll show you the manufacturing process that we at Ute Light uh, use to um, manufacture our unique materials. And the second part of the presentation is uh, I'll be showing you the um, <clears throat> specification standard for structural lightweight concrete. That's ASTM C330-17. So I will show you the current copy of that specification. I'll also show you a suggested specification. If you are a specifier, um, that you can use that suggested specification to compare it with your current specification to make sure that uh, everything is up, up to date. And then lastly, I'll be uh, talking about special usages of expanded shell clay or slates and different uh, projects that we've been involved with here at Ute over uh, uh, the many years. So one good resource uh, for information is to visit our website at utelight.com. There's a lot of great information and resources. Uh, we do have all of our uh, testing and reports posted online. Um, also, if there's anything that you do not see, uh, please get a hold of me. But I think we've covered uh, pretty much all the main industries uh, and different applications and specifications and everything are uh, on our website. You can also visit our association website, which is the Expanded Shell Clay and Slate Institute. Uh, that's abbreviated as ESCSI.org. Um, they have volumes and volumes of technical information, everything you want to know about structural lightweight concrete, uh, you can find it at our association website. So feel free uh, when you have some time uh, to visit that association website. Uh, again, uh, ESCS manufacturers uh, were available uh, in most of the states throughout the country. Again, out west, uh, there's just uh, two sources of uh, manufacturers, but uh, a complete listing can be found on the association website. And let me uh, right now in this presentation just go over um, uh, resolving and clarifying any concerns that you might have regarding or what you might have heard regarding uh, ESCS aggregates. Uh, since I've been with Ute Light, I always get asked uh, lightweight aggregates are not strong, durable, and resilient. So I would like to address that myth and then followed up by uh, um, aggregates are not available in my area. I'll also get asked about that as well. We don't have a local manufacturer. Okay. So let me take uh, address the first myth here. Uh, structural lightweight aggregates are not strong, resilient, and uh, durable. Again, after today's presentation, uh, you should not have uh, any reservations at all regarding specifying or using these types of materials in any uh, future projects. What we are talking about when we are um, talking about expanded shell, clay, and slate structural lightweight aggregates, we are talking about a high performance high profile uh, material used in a lot of very important applications throughout the country and the world. Here in the United States, you can look at the World Trade Center, you can look at the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, most of the major high rises use structural lightweight concrete. So this is something uh, that's uh, high performance and used in a lot of high profile projects. I wanna show you the uh, Pantheon structure that's located in Rome, Italy. Uh, our association traces our roots back to uh, Rome and to the Roman engineers who are still today considered the best structural engineers in the world. And this is an image of the Pantheon structure uh, built 27 BC. This particular structure, the Pantheon, is the largest unreinforced lightweight concrete dome in the world. It's uh, 42, 142 feet in diameter. It's about a third the size bigger than the US Capitol in Washington, DC. On that top left uh, picture is the top of this lightweight dome. It's uh, over 25 feet 
in diameter. It's nearly three feet thick at the circle opening, which is called the Oculus. Um, this particular uh, Pantheon structure has survived three massive fires in its lifetime, yet it's still resilient. Uh, it's known today as one of the best preserved ancient Roman monuments. So there's no question about strength, durability, and resiliency of lightweight concrete. The Roman engineers knew exactly what they were doing. So uh, this is, again, uh, the first known uh, structure still um, in use today to utilize structural lightweight concrete. So I want to ask you a question now. I want to ask you how resilient are your structures, roads, pavements, or what other projects uh, you've been involved with to environmental challenges. Here in Salt Lake City, uh, we've been prone to fires and earthquakes, and believe it or not, we've had a, um, not a hurricane, uh, we've had a tornado uh, hit us. Uh, just two days ago in uh, the Hawaiian Islands, uh, we uh, survived a hurricane. So these are all uh, natural changes. Really, you want your projects to uh, not only be able to survive these, but to be able to bounce back and be resilient. So again, the uh, Pantheon uh, structure, uh, it, uh, interesting fact here, it survived uh, since uh, this was built. It survived 65 major earthquakes of a magnitude of 5.0 or greater. There's been over 400,000 deaths in Rome, Italy since this was built. And this structure is still uh, resilient, is still uh, one of the main uh, tourist attractions uh, today in Rome, Italy. So you as a specifier should have absolutely no concerns or nor hesitations uh, regarding specifying this type of material in any of your future projects. This again is not something that's brand new. It's withstood the test of time. And again, over 2000 uh, years ago. All right, so let's take a look at the second myth. It's uh, that uh, these types of materials are not located in my area. Well, Yes, they are. So that myth is false. Uh, structural uh, expanded shale clay and slate lightweight aggregates are available in all 50 states. Uh, if you want to locate a local manufacturer in your area, uh, please visit our association website again and then uh, type in uh, or select your state and uh, it'll pull up uh, the manufacturers that do service your area there. Okay. So both of those myths uh, are false there. Okay. So let me uh, move into part one of uh, this presentation. Let's take a look at the physical properties and differences of natural and manufactured lightweight aggregates. Um, I like to use the analogy of two American automobiles uh, manufactured both about the same time. Uh, we'll take a look at the 1971 American Motors Pacer, and that'll represent the natural lightweight aggregate materials that are readily available today. And then uh, let's take a look at our 1968 Chevy Camaro SS. This could be compared or symbolic of a manufactured uh, high performance lightweight aggregate material. So all of your natural lightweight aggregates and materials, these are all just your basic lightweight materials. Uh, they're all volcanic in nature. Uh, some of the more prominent materials are your perlites, pumice, and scorias. Um, when these materials are used in concrete, they're usually used as fill and insulating concrete. Plastic unit weights between 90, I'm sorry, between 50 and 90 pounds per cubic foot compressive strengths between one and 2000 PSI. So again, these are not your, um, your structural materials um, used in structural concrete. Um, they do uh, serve a purpose. So used in those applications, those are uh, completely fine. Um, this is a close up uh, look at these natural lightweight materials. Again, all volcanic in nature, um, used in uh, different applications. Some of your perlites even uh, work in uh, horticulture and uh, uh, potting soils. Um, some of your pumices on your lower right-hand corner of your screen, uh, some of those are used in the beauty industries as uh, scrubs and so forth. But one of the uh, distinguishing characteristics about these natural lightweight materials is they're highly absorptive. They absorb a lot of water 
and their void systems are connecting. So when you use these in a structural application, uh, they are prone to crushing, uh, high absorption. Um, these are just natural materials. And so trying to keep uh, uh, your unit weights uh, consistent, those uh, begin to pose a problem. Again, some of these uh, absorptions are as high as 50%. So these materials do uh, not retain uh, very well their moistures. They are highly absorptive and they release that water back out. Again, if you're using these in a uh, concrete application, uh, you just thrown off your water cement ratio because these will let out all the water out of their, um, uh, their voids. Uh, or if they're uh, used in a dry application, uh, they'll take all of your mixed water. So these are not uh, very good, again, to use in structural lightweight concrete. So now let's take a look at the manufactured lightweight aggregates. And again, Ute-Light manufactures expanded shale. Uh, some of the various producers, depending on where they're located, either produce uh, uh, clay or slates or shales as well. So typically we see plastic unit weights when these are used in concrete. Of concrete uh, unit weights between 105 and 120 pounds per cubic foot. Again, those are plastic. Uh, light materials at 28 days, if they're used in concrete, we typically see a weight reduction between 7 to 12 pounds per cubic foot weight reduction off of that. Um, uh, compressive strengths, uh, typically between 3 and 6,000 PSI. These are typical compressive strengths that we see day in and day out. So really, we are looking at a a synthetic manufactured hybrid high performance lightweight aggregate materials here. Okay, so when we talk about expanded shell, what are we talking about? So we're talking about material that's uh, put into a rotary kiln and expanded at temperatures in excess of 2000 degrees. So there's three types of materials uh, that uh, we expand or that can be expanded uh, within our industry. Those are select uh, shale, clays, and slates. They've got to have the right chemical structure to be able to bloat properly and to be able to uh, retain its uh, unique characteristics. Uh, these materials meet the ASTM standard C330-17, which is, again, the specification for structural lightweight aggregates used in concrete. And as an example, uh, between uh, normal weight concrete and structural lightweight concrete, we typically see in a cubic yard about 945 pounds per, per yard weight reduction. So uh, in an example of a 100 yard bridge deck pour, structural lightweight concrete compared to normal weight concrete, uh, you would see a weight reduction of nearly uh, 47 and a quarter tons of weight reduced off of that structure in 100 yards. So um, if the name of the game is uh, resiliency and reducing the weight of the structure or the weight of whatever you're trying to do, uh, structural lightweight uh, concrete really does a great job. And let's take a closer look at um, this material here where we're talking about today, expanded shell clays and slates. Uh, the image in the center is um, uh, a select shale that's been expanded. Uh, the bottom portion of that image is actually a particle of cement. And you can see these very uniform, very predictable voids. Uh, these are non-interconnecting voids, so you get a lightweight, high-strength ceramic aggregate. If you take a look to the left of the screen, that center photo, that's actually a photo of a normal lightweight aggregate material. So you can uh, drastically see the difference in the void structure uh, there. Now let's take a look at the uh, manufacturing process. This is a very uh, unique, very interesting process. So uh, this image is an image of a uh, ute light where we're currently mining today. Uh, again, our deposit is expanded shale. So once the material is extracted, it's hauled to our kilns, it's crushed down to roughly uh, less than uh, three inches in diameter. And at that point, it's fed through a rotary kiln. Uh, these kilns are similar to what you'll find at a cement um, manufacturer, although these kilns don't um, get to um, temperatures in excess of 2,500 degrees, what cement 
producers uh, uh, cook their material to. But anyway, <clears throat> material is um, heated up to roughly 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that uh, temperature, it causes the carbon gases within the shale to expand. And it creates those non-interconnecting voids, which I just showed you. So you get a lightweight, high-strength ceramic aggregate. Um, this is uh, what it looks like when it comes out of our uh, kilns uh, through the manufacturing process. And again, this is a close-up of uh, these non-interconnecting voids. Again, a very good shot of uh, expanded uh, shell material in close contact with a, a cement particle. So it's very hard to tell where the cement ends and the aggregate begins. So that's called the interfacial zone. So we have a very good uh, contact between the aggregate and uh, the concrete. This is a representation of all of the materials within our industry. Uh, the browner materials are your clays, and then your shale and slates are your grayer materials. These are roughly half the density of uh, normal weight materials. This is a representation of a pound of uh, sand, a pound of limestone, you have your expanded shells in the center. You can tell some of the material uh, has um, volumed out and has spilled on the ground there. And then a uh, pound of pea gravel and sand. So you, again, you're, you're half the weight, twice the, um, the volume of normal weight materials. Again, this is another example of uh, volume to weight. On the left side, you have 25 tons of ordinary aggregate. And on the right side of the screen, you have 25 tons of expanded shell clays and slates. So again, very good visual, uh, twice the volume, half the weight. The UL fire ratings, most of the structural lightweight concrete that goes up on structures um, uh, does so because of uh, the fire ratings. Uh, UL does a very good job to make sure that none of the natural lightweight materials make it in to a UL fire rating. So they've specifically uh, mentioned expanded shale clear slates by the rotary kiln method. So if, uh, if you're uh, using structural lightweight concrete, again, the lightweight aggregate material that the producers, the ready mix producers use needs to be expanded shale clear slate, and that's done by the rotary kiln method. So you have your design assemblies, and that's, uh, if you look down, say, let's pick out the design assembly D403. That's a design assembly 403. To the right of that is the pounds per cubic foot of the concrete. So it's 107 pounds per cubic foot, plus or minus three pounds. Um, and then it's uh, 3,500 PSI, and the air entrainment is four to 7%. So just as a reminder, all structural lightweight concrete needs to be air entrained. Um, usually the specification is 6% plus or minus one and a half. So if you ever get into a situa uh, situation, if you're a specifier and you um, have a project and you've been asked in the past by the concrete finishers to reduce the air of the concrete uh, out of structural lightweight concrete, you need to tell those finishers uh, that's not allowed. Again, UL, fire ratings, all of the fire ratings that concrete needs to be air and trained concrete. Okay, these are um, some of the major industries that benefit from using structural lightweight aggregates and structural lightweight concrete. Again, uh, uh, pretty basic, uh, ready mix concrete, block, precast, uh, horticulture, uh, geotechnical, it's found in wallboard, uh, concrete roof tile, stone veneer uh, found in wastewater, and uh, many more. Uh, applications. So very um, unique material, depending on what you're trying to do with it, uh, used in a lot of our main uh, industries uh, today. So now let's take a look at part two of this presentation to our journey into uh, discovery of lightweight aggregates. Uh, this is a current copy of Ute Light's ASTM C330 uh, specification standard. Um, we get these done yearly. We currently have four materials that currently meet uh, the specification. This particular um, document that you see in front of you is for our light structural mediums, lightweight aggregate material. 
And basically, uh, ASTM C330, they uh, will take a look at the organic impurities and staining and uh, LOI in the lightweight material that's being tested. There's also a section on physical tests, and they take a look at bulk density, absorption, specific gravity, soundness of aggregates. Um, they also take a look at the uh, grading to make sure that it does meet the C330 uh, requirement. Uh, the next slide here, um, they do a concrete uh, test using a generic uh, concrete mix. I believe uh, ASTM uses a 0.54 water cement ratio. Um, again, it's just a, a generic uh, 3000 uh, PSI mix design and then they'll uh, uh, put into uh, the mix the uh, lightweight material. So in this uh, particular example, uh, the ASTM, this mix design, uh, uh, was able to get a plastic unit weight of 118.9 uh, pounds uh, per cubic foot. Uh, the compressive strengths, again, uh, this particular requirement is 3,000 PSI minimum. So you can tell your uh, average compressive strengths there and splitting tensiles. Uh, they do an oven dry and again uh, we typically see you know weight reductions between five and 12 pounds between plastic and uh, oven dry uh, weights there of the concrete um, and then the last page of the report is the um, approval and stamp of the uh, uh, engineer uh, involved in this so we get this done uh, once a year um, and then we post those to our website. So if you go to our website, ulight.com or any of our uh, manufacturer associations, they typically have their ASTM C330, uh, C330 reports posted as well. So what we have here is a specification guide. So if you're a structural engineer in your firm, uh, please uh, pull out your binder or wherever you might have your current specification and please compare it to this specification guide. All of the main uh, parts on how to properly specify structural lightweight concrete are in the specification guide. If you need any help with that, uh, feel free to get a hold of me or the manufacturer located in your area. And, uh, their technical sales rep would be uh, more than happy to uh, just review your specification guide to make sure that it hits all the bells and whistles uh, that should be there in the specification. Um, this next slide is a suggested lightweight mix design. So when somebody contacts me and tells me that they have a project coming up, that they need a um, suggested uh, mix design for, I'll usually uh, ask them several questions. One is I uh, need to find out what the unit weight is per cubic foot. I'll also ask them regarding the compressive strengths, the water cement ratios, and what the specific gravities are. And um, Usually the calls come from the ready mix producers. I usually don't get contacted too much from structural engineers regarding this information. Um, but uh, typically those are the items that I need before I can go ahead and uh, create a lightweight mix design. So again, these are just uh, suggested uh, lightweight mix designs. Uh, once the ready mix producer uh, does a, uh, Lightweight mix design does a trial batch. Uh, they'll get some temporary or preliminary numbers back uh, just to verify that this mix will meet what the spe uh, specification is asking for. Okay. So now let's take a look at part three. This is our last section in our discovery today. We'll take a, take a look at some special usages of where uh, our materials have been used in the past. They've been used in horticulture applications, uh, road and highways, solar projects, uh, high temperature landing pads we've been involved with, and um, probably the most um, um, important of uh, all these usages here that's gained uh, national attention has been the use of uh, what's called is internal curing of normal concrete. So I'll, uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, here uh, right now. Um, so what we are doing here for internal curing, we are basically switching gears. Okay, we are no longer talking about lightweight concrete, but normal weight concrete that is being cured from the inside out. Okay, okay we simply are replacing a small portion of the normal weight sand 
with a pre-saturated lightweight sand. And we're using the sand as a carrier, so to say, uh, to get water uniformly distributed inside the concrete. So when the relative humidity of the concrete inside exceeds 90%, um, the moisture inside the lightweight aggregate, which is the water, is drawn out automatically. And thus we're able to more efficiently hydrate all of the cement particles. And if you can do that, you will drastically reduce a lot of the shrinkage and cracking within your concrete. All of the shrinkage and cracking can be attributed to unhydrated cement particles. So that's what is causing the majority of uh, cracks and shrinkage in concrete. It's because of the unhydrated cement particles, okay? So, uh, so we're using the lightweight aggregate as a carrier for water inside the uh, concrete. Uh, this water, because of those non-interconnecting voids, uh, the water is actually locked up in the lightweight aggregate, the moisture does not affect the water cement ratio at all. Okay, so as we dealt here, we're reducing the uh, potential for cracking. I don't know who likes cracking, but we're reducing the potential for cracking, reducing the chlorides, all the bad, nasty stuff from getting into the concrete via the cracks, and we're improving the construction robustness. A lot of these projects, especially pavings, are done in remote areas where uh, water is not available uh, to wet cure on the surface. So uh, internal curing is a more efficient way of doing that. And ultimately, you're extending the surface life of your concrete by two to three times. So this next image is um, a visual of normal weight concrete. Uh, the cylinders on the left side are normal weight concrete that's been internally cured. And you can tell those cylinders have a lot of moisture in there. Concrete, the cylinders on the right side are just uh, your regular cure normal weight concrete. So again, the name of the game is if you can hydrate all of the cement particles, that's the most expensive component in your concrete mix. If you can hydrate all of the cement particles, you can drastically reduce the shrinkage and the cracking. If your concrete doesn't shrink and crack, it will last an extremely long, long time. So these are some of the benefits, again, with designing structures, roads, bridges, pavements, et cetera, with expanded shell clay and slate aggregates. Uh, you can reduce the dead loads, which equals design flexibility for uh, specifiers, ultimately uh, leading to cost savings for the project. For bridges, you might be able to eliminate a bridge girder, uh, create longer spans, increase live loads. Uh, smaller crane sizes can be uh, utilized. Uh, for pavements, whether you're doing jointed uh, plain concrete pavements or continuous reinforced concrete pavements, again, if you can hydrate 100% of the cement, which you can do with internal curing, you will drastically reduce the shrinkage and cracking by as much as 50%. You'll also have lower modulus of elasticities, increased compressive strength, so your pavements will be uh, resilient now. They'll be able to bounce back. They'll be able to uh, withstand all those environmental events. Okay. Let's take a look at horticulture just for a minute. Uh, this is a, a photo of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Salt Lake City. They've been using Ute Light for a number of years, specifically our engineered soils and designer growing media. Um, at the church office building at Temple Square and on the conference center, which is the world's largest non-column auditorium with a seating capacity in excess of 21,000 people. So this auditorium is the largest, um, again, uh, the largest non-column uh, auditorium in the world. It's large enough to hold two seven. 47 aircraft side by side. So just a massive structure. So again, uh, they were using uh, ute light in their flower beds up on their rooftop gardens. So they've been using it for a number of years. Um, we have uh, the Crescent Dune Solar Energy Project uh, that ute light was involved with a number of years ago. Uh, here we have thousands of heliostats. Those are reflective mirrors which track the sunlight and they concentrate the sunlight into a uh, central solar power tower. And this particular project was uh, 
the capability of producing up to 2,000 megawatts of energy generation. And the lightweight aggregates were used to help retain the heat in the plant's molten salt thermal storage tanks. So a very unique project. And lastly, we have uh, some high temperature landing pads that we've been involved with uh, in Yuma, Arizona. This was for the military's new generation F-35 aircraft. Um, interesting on these uh, mixes, uh, they needed to use all synthetic materials in uh, the uh, concrete mixture. So they used a lightweight coarse material and lightweight fines material. So again, um, they needed uh, concrete uh, to be able to withstand uh, the heat and the thrust from these uh, new generation um, aircraft. So that's the ending of our presentation for today. I appreciate your time and attention. I thank you very much for our engineers and specifiers out there. You can now go and create um, tremendous projects. And yes, the beginning is now. So again, um, I thank you for attending this presentation today. If you have any questions regarding this, or if you would like to schedule a live webinar uh, with your colleagues, uh, please contact me directly by the information uh, located on your screen. Also, please, please follow Utelight on all of our social media platforms here for in-depth and unique information regarding the use of this type of material in a wide variety of applications. If any of you would like material samples, uh, just let me know, call, text, or email. And lastly, I just want to mention uh, to be I'm confident that specifying and using structural lightweight aggregates in any of your future projects has a very long successful track record dating back more than 2,000 years. This is not something new. It's been around for a very, very long time. Also, please. Uh, be sure to check back with us periodically for new educational videos and presentations. And again, uh, thank you for being on this journey with me today. Thank you for your time and attention. Goodbye.